So, introduction to organic chemistry. So, the basics of A-level organic chemistry, paper 2, specimen 0.5. Give the name for isooctane. So, it's got one, two, three, four, five carbons in line. It's the longest uh, chain that I can see. They're all single bonds, so it's pentane. Um, and then I can see two methyl groups at number two, with a count from top right, uh, two methyl groups at carbon number two, then go three, four, and then carbon number four, there's another one. So there are three methyl groups, so it's trimethyl pentane, and they are at carbon number two, two and four, if you start from top right. Reduce the number of peaks in the carbon NMR spectrum of isooctane. Well, I don't know if this is going to come up, but let's have a look anyway. Um, I've labelled... Um, Two carbons is blue, they're in the same environment. One carbon in red, one carbon in yellow, one carbon in green, and uh, the three methyl groups, those carbons are in equivalent um, environments. So one, two, three, four, five different colours. 3.3, uh, octane can be formed together with propene and ethene in a reaction which one molecule of an alkane it contains 20 carbons is cracked, that means it's broken um, with cracking either with a catalyst or thermally by heating it. Um, so the alkane, the general form of alkanes is CNH2N plus 2, so if it's C20, double that to 40, add 2 is 42, H42. It says that it makes um, propene, so propene is C3H6. It says that it makes isooctane, which is C8H18, from counting uh, the number of carbons and hydrogens in the previous question. Um, and so what, what else could it make? It says it makes um, uh, ethene as well, so C2H4. And then you need to balance it. Um, so you need two in front of the C3H6, um, the propene, and three in front of the C2H4. Uh, products of the reaction show that the reaction is an example of thermal cracking. Thermal cracking means that alkenes are mainly formed, things with double bonds. Um, in thermal cracking, then you need a high temperature, you need a high pressure. If you have uh, catalytic cracking, then you need uh, still a high temperature, but only a moderate pressure, a slight pressure, just slightly ab above uh, atmospheric pressure if you use a catalyst for catalytic cracking. And in that case, you also get some alkenes, but you mainly you also get cyclic compounds, compounds where uh, carbon atoms are joined together in some kind of ring structure. To reduce the number of monochloral isomers formed by isooctane. Um, so uh, the number of places that the Cl can replace is four. It can go in four different places. Um, it could go um, onto the blue carbons, that's one place, but they're equivalent, so no matter which one they go onto, it's going to be one isomer. The red one, the yellow one, can't go onto the green one, um, but it could go onto the purple ones as well. So four different places that it can uh, replace a hydrogen and create a different isomer. To choose the, uh, draw the structure of the monochlor isomer that exists as a pair of optical isomers, so that carbon in the middle of that structure has got four different groups attached, so it's an optical isomer, um, and that reacts with chlorine to form only one monochloro compound. So a uh, skeletal formula is mon one monochloro compound, the isomer of isooctane that forms only one kind. So you're looking for something completely symmetrical. So um, I'm looking there at um, four carbon chain, with four methyl groups, two at carbon number two and two at carbon number four. It's completely symmetrical. So it doesn't matter which hydrogen the Cl replaces, uh, it's going to be um, the same isomer, one isomer. Um, and I've drawn it there with, uh, as you can see, a skeletal formula and the Cl replacing one of the hydrogens at the end on the right. Uh, alcohol A. Um, I've drawn the structural formula there or, 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 um, so that you can see what it looks like. It's got one, two, three, four carbons in the line. 
it's got an OH at carbon number two and it's got a methyl group at carbon number three. So it's but for four in a line, two ol, because the OH, the ol is at carbon number two, if you go from top right. Um, and we always give the ending, the ol part, the lower number if we can do, so that gets the two, two ol, which leaves the methyl group at number three, three methyl butane, two ol. So the structure of the organic product B formed when A is oxidized. When you oxidize something using something like acidified potassium dichromate, which turns orange to green, then the OH turns into a C double bondo. So you're going to make a ketone. If the OH is at the end, then you get an aldehyde. If you carry on oxidizing an aldehyde, by the way, if you carry on heating it under reflux with potassium dichromate, the aldehyde, would, uh, the primary alcohol with the OH at the end would turn into an aldehyde and then it would turn into a carboxylic acid. Um, Trismeric alkene C and D are formed when it's dehydrated. So what happens is you turn an, the OH, you remove the OH and you remove an H from a carbon alongside it. So across the two C's, where there's a C with an OH and a C with an, an H, you're removing water. OH from one carbon and an H from a neighbouring carbon. Now that OH could uh, be removed and the H could be removed from carbon number one if you laid them from the top right, which would make um, uh, but one E, or the OH could be removed and the other H could be removed from carbon number three, which would leave but two E. So there's two different places that uh, the H could be removed from. Uh, it's an elimination reaction because you're removing water. Then the type of structural iso isomerism shown by C and D. Well, you can have chain isomerism, where uh, you change the length of the chain and introduce branches. You can have position isomerism, where the position of the functional group changes, and that's what that is, position isomerism, because we've got but one e and but 2 e And then you could also have functional group, where you actually change the, the functional group and the, and the actual name changes. Um, say, for example, turning uh, aldehyde and ketones might have the, uh, the, the same, um, the same uh, molecular formula, but actually have different functional groups with the CO being at the end or a CO being in the middle of the chain uh, and aldehyde and ketone. This is the alcohol uh, AB. Uh, a product B and C in increasing boiling point. Um, so what have we got? Uh, C. Um, C is an alkene. Alcohol A is um, going to have hydrogen bonding. Product B Product B is the ketone, uh, and C is an alkene. So your alcohol is going to have hydrogen bonding because you've got an O bonded to an H. That's going to have the highest uh, boiling point. Then it's the ketone because you've got C to O. You haven't got an O bonded to an H, or an N bonded to an H, or an F bonded to an H, so you've not got um, a very polar bond, um, so you're not going to have hydrogen bonding, but you will get dipole-dipole if you've got something like a C bonded to an O, or a C bonded to a Cl, or a C bonded to a Br, so you get some polar bonding, and therefore some intermolecular dipole-dipole bonding, and then something like isomer C uh, hasn't got any polar bonding, and it had polar bonds, and it's got not got any hydrogen bonds, so that's just going to be Van der Waals. So, in order um, increasing boiling point, then um, C would have Van der Waals bond, B would have dipole dipole bond, and alcohol A would have the um, hydrogen bonds. So, that needs to be A, and that needs to be C. So increasing C with Van der Waals bonds, B with dipole dipole, and then A with hydrogen bonding.
Uh, draw the structure of an isomer of A that is not oxidized by acidified potassium dichromate, so you need an alcohol that's a tertiary alcohol. C with the OH has three different carbons bonded to it. That can't turn to a C double bond O, because otherwise the carbon would have five bonds. Draw the structure of the isomer that cannot be dehydrated. So to be dehydrated, you need a carbon with an OH and a neighbouring carbon with an H. So the OH gets removed from one carbon and the H gets removed from a neighbouring carbon. Well, if you look there, I've got CH2OH, but the neighbouring carbon, you see in the middle, hasn't got an H. So that can't be dehydrated and turned to an alkene by using concentrated sulfuric acid.